With computers, your input determines your output. Same with your mind. When you enter good input, you get good output, and on the downside, when you enter bad input, you get bad output. Welcome to Opportuno, Episode 29, Mindset. What does the word mindset mean to you? The first known use of the word mindset was over 100 years ago, in the year 1909. Mindset is a recent use of the word mind. On the website, BibleGateway.com, in the King James Version of the Bible, a search on the word mind reveals 132 results. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines mindset as Number 1, a mental attitude or inclination, and number 2, a fixed state of mind. End of quote. A fixed state of mind can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on the fixed mindset. Mindset is often thought of as a mind that has established thoughts that are unchangeable. You will find out in this podcast episode that your current mindset can be modified. Have you ever heard someone say, my mind is made up? What they are expressing when they say my mind is made up, is that they have made a decision and will not change their mind. The good news is that your mindset does not have to be a permanent, fixed mindset, but your mindset can evolve, grow and change for the better. The bad news is that your mindset can also evolve, grow and change for the worse. It all depends on you. You can choose wrong things to develop a wrong mindset, or choose right things to develop a right mindset. Ultimately, your mindset will become your belief system and your actions will follow what you believe. A mindset built on truth and wisdom will allow you to live a just and wise life. You will never have the abundant life that God wants for us, if your mindset is built on sinful and evil thoughts. Jesus said, in the Bible, in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 10, the following. The thief cometh not, but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy, I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. End of quote. Abundant life is not about having more material possessions. Abundant life is about filling the emptiness of your soul with peace and a purpose in this life, and for all eternity. The theologian, Henry Alford, expressed abundance well, in his quote, which reads as follows. Man's life is of God, not of his goods, however abundant they may be. End of quote. Our mind is not a secret place known only to us. God knows our thoughts. Thoughts develop ideas, and ideas lead to action. The motivational speaker, Earl Nightingale, said. Everything begins with an idea. End of quote. There are many examples in the Bible where Jesus knew the thoughts of man. In the Bible, in the book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 4, reads as follows. And Jesus knowing their thoughts said, Wherefore think ye evil in your hearts? End of quote. There is nothing hidden from God. When it's all said and done we, all want perfect peace. The Bible, in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 6, tells us that to be spiritually minded is life and peace. In the Bible, in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 5 and 6, reads as follows. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. End of quote. If you want a mindset that would keep you in perfect peace, then think on the following verses found in the Bible. In the Bible, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 26, verses 3 and 4, reads as follows. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord for ever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. End of quote. No one knows you better than God. God knows all our thoughts. The good, the bad and the ugly. In the Bible, in the book of Psalms, chapter 139, verses 1 through 4, David speaks to the Lord, saying, O Lord, Thou hast searched me, and known me. Thou knowest my downsitting and mine uprising, Thou understandest my thought afar off. 
Thou compassest my path and my lying down, and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but, lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. End of quote. There is nowhere to run and nowhere to hide to escape the love of God. God wants the best for mankind. God gives you the choice to accept or reject Him. You have nothing to gain by rejecting God and everything to gain by accepting God. Accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior will provide you the best filter to separate right from wrong, good from evil, and light from darkness. Salvation is something you cannot obtain by doing good works and you cannot purchase salvation. Eternal salvation is a gift of God. It is by the grace of God, we are saved through faith, as explained in the following verses in the Bible. Paul expressed that eternal salvation is the gift of God, in the book of Romans, chapter 6, verse 23 that reads as follows. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. End of quote. Paul also explained, how it is a free gift, in the book of Romans, chapter 5, verses 15 through 18, that reads as follows. But not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, much more the grace of God, and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Jesus Christ, hath abounded unto many. And not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift, for the judgment was by one to condemnation, but the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. For if by one man's offence death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore as by the offence of one judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. End of quote. And Paul shared with the Ephesians, that it was by grace that they were saved through faith, in the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, that reads as follows. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. End of quote. Peter told Simon, that this gift from God cannot be purchased, in the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 20, that reads as follows. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. End of quote. In the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9, reads as follows. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. End of quote. In the Bible, in the book of John, chapter 14, Jesus was sharing with his disciples how he would be going away. A question by Thomas, one of the disciples of Jesus, and the reply by Jesus to Thomas's question, is found in the Bible, in the book of John, chapter 14, verses 5 and 6, that reads as follows. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. End of quote. In the Bible, in the book of John, chapter 3, Jesus answers questions, asked by Nicodemus, a Pharisee. In the book of John, chapter 3, verses 1 through 21, reads as follows. There was a man of the Pharisees, named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night, and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb, and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth, so is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe, if I tell you of heavenly things? 
And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For every one that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. End of quote. In the Bible in the book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 7, reads as follows. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, saith he to thee. But his heart is not with thee. End of quote. And a quote by James Allen, author of the book. As a man thinketh, reads as follows. All that we achieve and all that we fail to achieve is the direct result of our own thoughts, self-control is strength. Right thought is mastery. Calmness is power. End of quote. What should you think about? The Bible has an answer to that question. In the Bible, in the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 8, reads as follows. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. End of quote. Your mind works similar to that computer saying you might have heard. Garbage in, garbage out. With computers, your input determines your output. Same with your mind. When you enter good input, you get good output, and on the downside, when you enter bad input, you get bad output. The following story, entitled, The Tale of Two Wolves, was made available by the, the Nanticoke Indian tribe from their website, nanticokeindians.org. That website name is spelled N-A-N-T-I-C-O-K-E-I-N-D-I-A-N-S dot O-R-G. The following is the story of the tale of two wolves. One evening, an elderly Cherokee brave told his grandson about a battle that goes on inside people. He said, My son, the battle is between two wolves inside us all. One is evil. It is anger, envy, jealousy, sorrow, regret, greed, arrogance, self pity, guilt resentment, inferiority, lies, false pride, superiority, and ego. The other is good. It is joy, peace, love, hope, serenity, humility, kindness, benevolence, empathy, generosity, truth, compassion, and faith. The grandson thought about it for a minute, and then asked his grandfather. Which wolf wins? The old Cherokee simply replied. The one that you feed. End of story. Carol S. Dweck. The last name spelled D-W-E-C-K. Currently a professor of psychology at Stanford University, has written a book entitled Mindset. The New Psychology of Success. In an interview in the year 2012, when Carol S. Dweck was asked, what is your definition of fixed and growth mindsets, she said. In a fixed mindset students believe their basic abilities, their intelligence, their talents, are just fixed traits. They have a certain amount and that's that, and then their goal becomes to look smart all the time and never look dumb. In a growth mindset students understand that their talents and abilities can be developed through effort, good teaching and persistence. They don't necessarily think everyone's the same or anyone can be Einstein, but they believe everyone can get smarter if they work at it. End of quote. Unfortunately, a wrong mindset, whether it be a fixed mindset or growth mindset, can lead people to believe they are right, even when they are wrong. 
the more you dismiss things you hear, see or do that you know are wrong, the more you accept the things you hear, see or do, as no longer being wrong. Right is right and wrong is wrong, regardless of how many people believe that wrong things are right. If you were to go back in time and show people current news, movies, social media, television, cartoons etc., they could scarcely believe that people could so openly call wrong right, and right wrong. In the Bible, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 5, verse 20, reads as follows. Woe unto them that call evil good, and good evil, that put darkness for light, and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. End of quote. Jesus is the light of the world. In the Bible, in the book of John, chapter 8, verse 12, reads as follows. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world, he that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. End of quote. It is very obvious that morality and a sense of knowing right from wrong has been in a downward spiral for many years. Some have referred to this phenomenon of losing our moral sense of direction as dumbing down. Even if you have been a victim of dumbing down, you can smarten up. You do not have to have a mindset based on the world's wants and desires for you, but you can smarten up and start living truth, and seeking truth, to experience a growth mindset built on truth. God wants us to renew our minds. In the Bible, in the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, reads as follows. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, and acceptable, and perfect, will of God. End of quote. In the 1930s, dumbing down was once a secret code that film writers used when they had to revise scripts that would be liked and understood by people they assumed had less intelligence. Now, dumbing down has a somewhat different, but similar meaning. Dumb is the opposite of smart. Dumb thoughts and actions are based on wrong information, and smart thoughts and actions are based on right information. When individuals, authorities, leaders, media, governments, etc., intentionally or unintentionally report wrong information, then those people who believe that wrong information have been dumbed down. Dumbing down people by reporting wrong information is one way to shape individual and public opinion to conform to perceived beliefs and agendas. The world is a big, beautiful place with wonderful and good people, with many exciting, interesting things and places to explore. There are unlimited opportunities to do good. Do what is right, make a difference for the better, making it possible to continually evolve and grow your mindset to a mindset based on truth and wisdom. How can a person or persons be so misdirected by adopting a wrong mindset of others? The answer is that somewhere in life they either never found their moral compass, lost their moral compass, or, by choosing wrong over right, so many times, they became numb to be able to make a decision between right and wrong. We are to put our trust in God, not in man. In the Bible, in the book of Psalms, chapter 118, verse 8 reads as follows. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. End of quote. Light will dispel darkness and reveal what is hidden in the darkness. Everyone that believes and trusts in Jesus, can be a light in the darkness. In the Bible in the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8, reads as follows. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord, walk as children of light. End of quote. Jesus is quoted as saying in the Bible in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 to 16, the following. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle, and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. End of quote. You must be eternally vigilant to always be on guard, not to be misled into adopting a wrong mindset. Just a few years ago, it would have been unthinkable that there would be so many people exhibiting wrong behavior and believing wrong ideas due to adopting wrong mindsets. Just as one wrong mindset can be a detriment to many, a right mindset can be a blessing to many. Even you, just being one person with the right mindset, can be an influence for good, for those in your circle of influence, creating ripples, with that ripple effect having the real possibility of having a good effect for many people all over the world. Just as a pebble thrown in the water, generates ripples, in all directions, 
by living your life with a good mindset, you also can generate ripples spreading good to people you know and spreading good to people you may never know in this life. When you consider the possibility that your words and actions will cause ripple effects directly affecting people's lives for good or for bad, it emphasizes the importance of adopting a right mindset. You may have questions and concerns like, how can I know if I have the right mindset? I've had my mindset so long, I don't know if it's a right mindset. How can I change my mindset? I know I want to be more, do more, have a more positive outlook plus make a difference to improve my life and the lives of others. The answer to those many questions and concerns is finding that moral compass to guide and direct you on the right path. A Bible verse in a book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 105, reads as follows. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. End of quote. A flashlight can be a very valuable tool needed to light your path at night through a dark area. When using a flashlight to light a dark path at night, you can not always see the entire path when walking but with the help of a flashlight, you can see your next step. The destination may not always be clearly seen as you walk along life's path, but using the word of God as a lamp showing you where you are to take the next best step will keep you on the right path. The definition to moral compass, according to the Cambridge Dictionary, is as follows. A natural feeling that makes people know what is right and wrong and how they should behave. End of quote. Not doing wrong is the right thing to do. Here are a few quotes about doing the right thing. With integrity, you have nothing to fear, since you have nothing to hide. With integrity, you will do the right thing, so you will have no guilt. Zig Ziglar. End of quote. That old law about an eye for an eye leaves everybody blind. The time is always right to do the right thing. Martin Luther King, Jr. End of quote. Do the right thing. It will gratify some people and astonish the rest. Mark Twain. End of quote. And. Sometimes it is better to lose and do the right thing than to win and do the wrong thing. Tony Blair. End of quote. Unless you have lost or never had the right moral compass, you will know the right thing to do. Ignoring doing the right things will harden your soul and spirit to do the right things, leading you to having a wrong, fixed mindset, not even bending toward the truth, to do right and not do wrong. Sometimes you only hear that little voice, that inkling inside of you, as an indicator, that what you are thinking about, or doing, is wrong. Be attentive, to always seek wisdom and also be attentive to that little voice. That inkling inside of you can tell you what you are doing or thinking about doing is wrong or right. In the Bible, found in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19, you can read about the Lord, speaking to Elijah, in a still small voice. In the Bible, in the book of 1 Kings, chapter 19, verse 12, reads as follows. And after the earthquake a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire a still small voice. End of quote. With all the distractions in the world, sometimes, you just have to take time out to meditate on scripture, be silent and listen. The book of Psalms, chapter 46, verse 10, in the Bible, reads as follows, Be still, and know that I am God, I will be exalted among the heathen, I will be exalted in the earth. End of quote. Jesus is quoted as saying, in the Bible, in the book of John, chapter 10, verse 27, the following, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. End of quote. Samuel, in the Bible, heard from God, when intentionally listening for God. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 3, verses 9 through 10, in the Bible reads as follows. Therefore Eli said unto Samuel, Go, lie down, and it shall be, if he call thee, that thou shalt say, Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. And the Lord came, and stood, and called us at other times, Samuel, Samuel. Then Samuel answered, Speak, for thy servant heareth. End of quote. In the Bible, God encourages Jeremiah, to call out to him for answers. In the Bible, in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, verse 3, reads as follows. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things, which thou knowest not. End of quote. When listening and hearing from God, discernment will help us to know that what we are hearing is from God. In 1 John, chapter 4, verse 1, in the Bible, John tells us the following. 
Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. End of quote. The battle between wrong and right is not new to our generation. This battle between wrong and right begins in your mind with your thoughts. The Bible should be used as a guide to helping us choose right from wrong. You must be careful to not pick and choose scripture but should study and use the Bible in its entirety. You might have heard the expression that the Bible is the only living book. You may have had the occasion to read scripture that you've read before, but when reading the same scripture again, you receive new revelation and spiritual insights. In the Bible, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12, reads as follows. For the word of God is quick, and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. End of quote. When seeking God, be sincere, which is God's instruction to Jeremiah, as found in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 13, that reads as follows. And ye shall seek me, and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. End of quote. You should study scripture to be sure what you are hearing is from God. The word of God is the same yesterday, today and forever. In the Bible, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 8, reads as follows. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, and today, and forever. End of quote. If there is a message you think you might have heard, that goes against the word of God, then that message, is not from God. The Bible tells us, that God cannot break his word. It is impossible for God to lie. In the Bible, in the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verses 18 through 20, reads as follows. That by two immutable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before us. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which entereth into that within the veil. Whither the forerunner is for us entered, even Jesus, made an high priest for ever after the order of Melchizedek. End of quote. In the Bible, the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15, reads as follows. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. End of quote. Also, in the Bible, the book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verses 16 through 17, reads as follows. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. End of quote. Seek God and you will find him, as Jesus reminds us in the Bible, in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 7 through 8, that reads as follows. Ask, and it shall be given you, seek, and ye shall find, knock, and it shall be opened unto you, for every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. End of quote. Just as relationships with people require communication, a good relationship with God requires communication. We should remain humble. In the Bible, in the book of Micah, chapter 6, verse 8, reads as follows. He hath showed thee, O man, what is good, and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly, and to love mercy, and to walk humbly with thy God. End of quote. The following are a few verses in the Bible that tells us of the importance of being humble. Philippians, chapter 2, verses 3 through 11, reads as follows. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, of things in heaven, and things in earth, and things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. End of quote. James, chapter 4, verse 6, reads as follows. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. End of quote. 
Luke, chapter 14, verse 11, reads as follows. For whosoever exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. End of quote. Proverbs, chapter 22, verse 4, reads as follows. By humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, and honor, and life. End of quote. And, 1 Peter 5, verse 6, reads as follows. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. End of quote. You do have a choice. Choose to do the right thing. There is a difference. Between wrong and right. The choice is yours to make. Choose right, look before you leap and think before you speak, and remember to ask God for wisdom. It is always a good thing to seek wise counsel. In the Bible, in the book of Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14, reads as follows. Where no counsel is, the people fall, but in the multitude of counselors there is safety. End of quote. Believers who have put their trust in Jesus are meant to let their light shine before men for all the right reasons, for reasons that would bring glory to God. When your moral compass lines up with the teachings of Jesus and the Bible, then your good works will bring glory to God and be a blessing to people. In the Bible, in the book of Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 reads as follows. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. End of quote. Believers who have accepted and put their trust in Jesus, have what is known as spiritual discernment. If you feel you need spiritual discernment, the Bible is a good place to look for answers. The Bible in the book of James chapter 1, verse 5, reads as follows. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. End of quote. Valuing and using knowledge, wisdom, wise counselors, and spiritual discernment will constantly shape and evolve your mindset. It's up to you and you only to stand guard over your mindset, and also to keep and grow the right mindset, and not keep and grow the wrong mindset. Knowing right from wrong and striving to do right, is required to live the best life. In the Bible, in the book of James chapter 4, verse 17 reads as follows. Therefore to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. End of quote. For the right mindset, pay special attention to spiritual discernment. Plus listen to your conscience, wise counselors, as well as seek wisdom and knowledge. Your mindset should never be a fixed mindset, but should continually evolve and expand as you pay special attention and make choices using spiritual discernment, your conscience, wise counselors, as well as seeking knowledge and wisdom. David Cottrell, spelled C-O-T-T-R-E-L-L, -L, author of more than 25 books, said the following. Doing the right thing isn't always easy. In fact, sometimes it's real hard. But just remember that doing the right thing is always right. End of quote. Sometimes you may feel that you're outnumbered when you have to take a stand to choose to live by your convictions. It may be you feel alone in your beliefs, or you may even experience condemnation, intimidation and persecution for standing your ground, not going along, just to get along, with what your conscience and beliefs tell you is wrong. A quote by Ralph Waldo Emerson reads as follows. Whatever you do, you need courage. Whatever course you decide upon, there is always someone to tell you you are wrong. There are always difficulties arising which tempt you to believe that your critics are right. End of quote. The Apostle Paul gave us a good thought about this when he said, as recorded in the book of Philippians, chapter 1, verse 20, the following. According to my earnest expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed, but that with all boldness, as always, so now also Christ shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life, or by death. End of quote. It is never too late to begin to choose right over wrong. A right mindset comprised of right thoughts will lead to right choices. The choices you make have consequences for you and for others. Making a determined effort, to start now, this moment. To begin to make a conscious, sincere effort to choose right thoughts and right actions will make a positive change in your life and in the lives of others. To live the best life, adopt and grow a right mindset, by always striving to choose right over wrong. In closing, the following are the words of Jesus as recorded in the Bible in the book of John, chapter 16, verse 33, that reads as follows. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world.
End of quote. That is all for now. For more items that might be of interest to you, please visit our website, opportuno.org. Thank you. Thank you.